Chairman, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Could you please stand for the invitation and uh, the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I hope you leave us Absolutely. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Our gracious and kind Heavenly Father, Lord, we are uh, absolutely humble for the opportunity to gather here tonight. Lord, we ask you to watch over this meeting. We thank you for such a wonderful day you've given us. We ask that you'll give this board the uh, wisdom and the courage to make the decisions that are not only in the best interest of you, but also in the community. Lord, we ask that you'll guide this council. We ask this in your son's name and pray. Amen. 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 Uh, first on the agenda is special presentation and our introduction of our new public works director, Matt Day. Okay, I'm very excited to introduce to you the second employee to ever be hired at Pocahontas Prison, Gary Schrader. So Gary, if you'll stand up, Gary, uh, he was the head of maintenance at Pocahontas Very vast background in engineering, uh, extremely talented in HVAC, PLCs. Uh, so we're really looking forward to what he can bring to the table. He started Monday, and so far he hadn't regretted it. Uh, so we're really looking forward to uh, what he's going to bring to the table in the future. Congratulations, Gary. Gary, uh, welcome aboard. Happy to be here. We'll keep you busy, we guarantee you. Uh, next is the recognition of of a grant. First. Okay, every now and then we are blessed. I'd say every now and then it's more than just every now and then, but we have a department head that steps up and goes after grants to offset local costs to the community and tax dollars. And I'm very pleased again, and Cindy, you correct me if I'm wrong, but so far in just a short amount of time since you've been director of our rescue squad here north of over three hundred thousand dollars in grants is that correct that's correct how about four hundred okay well so she's north of three hundred thousand and she just picked up a another grant and said if you don't care if you'll update cancel on exactly what that grant is for and how you're going to utilize that piece of equipment we received a grant from the rescue squad assistant fund from the virginia department of health for forty nine thousand dollars that's to go toward um, three new project monitors we need for our trucks. The ones we have now are updated and are not, unable to be um, serviced. So uh, that'll go toward purchasing three more mm -hmm. short monitors for our trucks that we desperately need. Congratulations. Absolutely. And we move on. Uh, recognition of Miss Sinkford for being a male discount. All right, Miss Sainford, once again, another department head steps up. Uh, Sainford uh, actually should be wearing the, I guess, the gold chief badge because she does keep that police department up and running. Uh, and everybody knows that. And the uh, chief knows where I'm going with this. But anyway, uh, we want to thank Flora for her efforts that she put in. And Flora does the comp control program. Uh, that we have for the you know injured on, on the job but she actually saved the town seven thousand two hundred and twelve dollars in a discount so go for it. speech floor speech speech i know you have lost it thank you <laughs> gosh you are usually uh, not able to say much you can say more than that. Give us a long speech. No, this time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll say that she, she's worked very hard for three years at least to try to get this uh, um, to where we can get the discount. She, she stays after it every month that uh, she does safety meetings and worked hard to get this accomplished. And uh, she ought to be recognized. Okay. Before we move on to the other thing. Uh, I'd like to uh, pass this along, uh, Gary, if you pass this on to your guys. Uh, appreciate the effort that they have done and the tremendous job they've done at Lincolnshire Parking 
and get into the office park up and run. Uh, we are highly indebted to our public works people and our office people uh, for this endeavor. And uh, on behalf of council and myself, I want to let them know that it's uh, uh, very uh, uh, thank you. And, uh, next on the agenda is the uh, billboard design approval. Uh, thank you, later. Yeah, they've got it in their pack. After meeting with council last month and asking uh, and, and sort of brainstorming with Dr. Brown, we added in the bullet point on the bottom, the off park opening July 7th, to have that included on the billboards as well. Anybody else have any questions? Nothing looks good. Mm -hmm. Hey, Angie, I think we uh, uh, like your design. Uh, we, we want to take it on advisement. I mean, if we get with, with Todd. Uh, yeah, I'll catch up with you in the next couple of days. Okay. We'll figure out they have Who's, you. Who designed the billboard for you? Glenn Shelley Brain. Seems to me like uh, last month when you came before the board, the uh, we talked about advertising the Uncle Park, but we got we're asking for a lot of money, yeah. but we got a little old tiny piece down in the corner. But we got a big thing across the top that says smoothies. Well. Uh, those are interchangeable. We can change. Well, them. I know that, but it, again, uh, who else is donating to this billboard besides the town of Texas? The initial cost is donated by the town. The what? The initial cost will be donated by the town. At the end of the six-month contract, the businesses that are being mentioned on this billboard will be paying the board. Yeah, but there's really no one, no business, just a type of business. Uh, we got a new business in town called S Selling Smoothies. They got a big old quarter of a page across the top there. And then you got all the other things there. Mm -hmm. It seems to me like that we could use a little more there and then when, they, when they're ready to pay, mm -hmm. put their names on. And that, that, that one place you've got on there where you've got it inscribed written out there, whatever it is the word was. Rediscover. Once you get that on the billboard, you won't be able to recognize it hardly. I know I spent about I'm 20 sure. years in the billboard business with Harry's. <laughs> I'm sure. So, okay, just want to say what I thought. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, next on the end is Farm Table. Uh, yeah. the, uh, Um, I wanted to um, come for a couple of reasons. First of all, we've got our farm to table set again, uh, September 8th. This will be our third year. So my first uh, request is permission to use the street, Main Street, uh, on September 8th, and permission to use or serve wine and beer. Uh, no different than anything that we've done in the prior two years. Um, we may grow a little bit, but I think our big bump came last year. I think we only increased by probably 10 maybe 15 or so tickets. Um, I, for those of you who haven't had a chance to attend, I've got a couple photos and I didn't put them in packets in advance. So if I could just bring them up to you, I'd like to. Thank you. These are just some images so you can see what a, what a, what a nice atmosphere in our beautiful town it is. It's a, an amazing event. Um, and I've been with it for three years. Ms. Jessica Neal, who's back here with me now, is our accountant, bookkeeper, tracks all the money, and she's been with us now for, this is her second, and, and Ms. Angela uh, Lighton has joined us this year. So each year we seem to attract more and more people to come and just help <laughs> and join in and give us ideas. 
Uh, there is live music that uh, is out there each year. Um, it's always been someone regional or local. Uh, in fact, last year you all helped us with the music. You, you helped us with a thousand dollars towards our music. Um, it's incredible food. We have multiple phases of eating. We have appetizers, we have salads. This year we're going to have a soup, um, main dish, and a dessert dish. And each dish is prepared by someone different in this community. So we have Clint Neal of Your Great Escape. We have Morgan Lowe of The Brewery. We have several other different local, regional sort of chefs that are contributing to breads, contributing to desserts. Uh, cousins, they did an amazing um, tomato and, and watermelon salad last year. So the idea is to bring all the best that we have to hear that is directly from a farm, etc., cetera, uh, and, and serve it. Uh, most of our stuff, I'd say 90% of our stuff, comes from Tazewell County. If we can't find it in Tazewell County, like for instance, we don't have a vineyard, then we go, we go a little bit further out, like in this case, we'll go to Abingdon. This year, we're really excited because we've got a brewery, and we've already got arrangements for a special farm-to-table brew just for our event. Um, so the idea, again, is promote, promote, at the same time, fully enjoy all that we have. Um, so that's my first request, is permission to use it, and permission to serve the alcohol. Um, next, as I said, you all helped us with the music last year, and, and we would ask again that you, you help with the music again. Um, uh, budgets being what they are, though, uh, we've cut our budget in that area. Uh, we found another wonderful, similar kind of music, jazz, something very simple, background music, that will cut the cost in half. Um, and we're really excited about it. They are also local. So the cost this year would only be 500 down from 1000 last year. And then finally, um, I'd like to ask for a complete waiver of the fee that I understand is charged for the folks who use Main Street. Um, we are completely volunteer. Uh, even our chefs show up and work all day in the hot sun after buying a ticket <laughs> and don't charge a thing. We cover their costs. If he has to pay staff or something like that, we will cover staffs. Um, but we are completely volunteer and we work all year to prepare this meal once a year. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you? Um, all the funds that we've cleared, and this year we do have funds uh, identified for you so you can have a sense of what we took in and what our expenses were, etc. Every bit of it after our expenses is earmarked for a really great project. Um, so before we get our expenses and our expected costs this year, I'd like to show you what we're planning. Now we've not gotten anything fully done. We've gotten an idea and we've gotten buy-in from a couple key people. Uh, someone in the farmer's market, someone in Tazewell today, someone on the board of supervisors, and so we're, I mean, this is an infantile idea, but I think it's the right time, and it's the right idea, so I could do one more time. I'm going to show you first uh, a structure that's over in Marion, you know, these two also, this is Marion, and then this is Abigail, the last one is Abigail. Marion and Abigail have managed to put up really nice uh, permanent structures for their farmer's market. Uh, and the, the really exciting one that I, I love is they're all beautiful and they have unique areas or unique parts of them. But the Marion one, they put it on a public parking lot and every single parking space is still 100% available, except it's now it's covered parking. So we have ideas, we've got a couple different areas that we'd like to see this go. There's no commitments, there's not even a request yet. But the point is, is that there's great potential here. And with the funds that we're raising, that's what we want to build our farmers, our farmers for their farmers market. I see them bouncing from the back of a lot to the Main Street Park to over by Wingos and Wingos. It was incredibly hot and there's lots of traffic, but there's no, there's no just vibe. That's all I can say. Um, I'm going to show you a couple other pictures of what some of the other communities around this um, area, um, sort of northeastern region, have done. There's lots of potential for things that we could have designed, et cetera. And I think, you know, with what I've seen with Farm, uh, farm to Table and how excited people are to come and how much fun we have, I think this is a great potential. I think that there's a potential we don't even ask anybody for money kind of thing. Maybe a grant. Grants are easy. But I, I think there's a potential that we could do this all on our own. Plain and simple. 
There's partnership possibilities with Casper today. There's partnership possibilities with the trade school. There's partnership possibilities with Walmart. There's grant possibilities. And we're earning money with what we're doing with Farm to Table. Um, okay, so let's let's get to the numbers. And I know somebody asked pretty vociferously last year. We weren't quite as organized last year. So this year, um, we had, uh, last year, we had ticket sales of $11,000. And we kept our costs uh, just over $7,300. So there's, there's a nice little cushion there. But if we have to pay what we calculated as uh, $1,150, which would be the hours that we're talking about cut, shutting that street down, but well, that cuts into that pretty heavily. And all these volunteers, and, and we have a lot. We probably have, but well, we have we are 501c3 officially, um, and I think we have four members on our board, maybe five. Um, volunteers showing up to meetings and participating, probably another 15 people, and then just general chefs, members of the community. I'd say we expand to probably 25 or 30 people easily, easily. So there's a lot of people that are just simply saying, yeah, this is a great idea. What do you mean? What do you mean? Cover my costs, and I'll help you, happily. This year, actually, we're doing something kind of fun. For all those people who are just working for free for us, we have a volunteer uh, photographer who's going to photograph them. We're going to write up a little bio about who they are. This chef at Payne's Peak, this chef at Clint's at, at, at New Grace State. And as people are waiting in line, because they didn't have to wait in line a little bit last year to get in, um, we're going to have some nice little poster boards that are, again, promoting our farmers, promoting our chefs, promoting all this so wonderful here and that we're doing well. Um, so that's that's what I've got. So here's here's a rough breakdown of our um, of our costs. If you like that as well to see the individual what was done, music and food and all that. This is from see, last year. This is from last year. Now we have just started pre-sale tickets. In fact today was the first sale the day that I even put up a sign saying that public tickets are available. Um, but that, so pre-sale tickets for this year are already running. We've got almost 50 out the door. Um, we're not having any problem, once again, selling out. We sold out the first year, uh, probably two weeks before the event. Last year, we sold out a month before the event. I've got a quick Please. question. Uh, you're including in your total cost the $1,000 for the band, which we covered. Sure, sure. And then, so then would that knock that down to 6300 Sure. I'm not a money spurt. You, know, you can go to law school because they don't do math. <laughs> but Jessica, do you have anything to add at this point about anything? Or is that an active statement? I can do it here after you. Okay. So you all have actually made $4,700 yeah, for the life Yeah, so was the $1,000 in the uh, delayed progress. No, so no, what are you saying here? They sold a thousand dollars in tickets, and they had sixty-three hundred. Okay. Okay. Do I have any food donations? Right. Or you donations? Now we had a lot of. Were there any other donations? No, you were it. You were it. Yeah, it was. It was. You know. We had a, a shift in, in sort of the leadership in the group between the first year and the second year, so we just were getting our feet under us. You know, but everybody's so, so tight with me. I'm doing everything I can to try and make it easier and show more bang for the buck and, uh, you know, just make it So after two fun years, fun, after fun two fun years now, right, what, what's your balance statement in your checking account? Oh, I'd say at this point we probably well because we started putting in money for next year, so it's very hard to say. But I would say at the end of last year there was clearly five thousand in there. And at this point now that we started putting ticket money for this human year, it's probably over six and maybe approaching seven. You're showing your ticket sales of eleven thousand dollars. What about the monies that was donated to your like the town? Uh, that's on that list as well, and, and you are correct. It was listed as a cost that should have been added in on the other side as, as, a, as a, on the other side of the accounting calculation, so you are correct about that. Yes. And there was plenty of in-kind donation as well, and we didn't list that for you all. Um, we got it for our own 501c3 purposes. But there are plenty of in-kind people that just said, yeah, I'll donate whatever you need. Does the, county, does the county donate anything to this? We didn't get to the county last year. You all were nicer. 
<laughs> so year one is like 150 tickets? Yeah. Year one, we started at 100 and I think we grew to 120. Okay, then last and year we you grew up like 220. Darn it, well, yeah, we went to 220. We sold every ticket at 220 and we're going to shoot for 235, 240 this okay. year. Okay. We're kind of maxing out in what we can handle. Right. You know, and even just balancing the table. At, we're in it. Yes, you were there, weren't you? I was ready. The table was huge last year. And so this year we're trying to do we keep it that long? Do we split it into two? Do we put a two by two this way? Do we put a two and then orders and then another one over there? So there's a lot of discussion of how to make it still really fun, accessible, but not a half a mile to reach your seat. <laughs> so. what? Do you remember what it cost the town to uh, do what we do for them? Um, the hard cost last year was $1,473.31. We had some soft costs, which is just the, the VDOT rates on the vehicles that we charged back in the Commonwealth. It was a little over $700. Thousand dollar donation that town council had right at thirty two hundred dollars in it. I'll pass that over to town. Okay. Something else to consider when it came to the public bathrooms we cleaned them, we spruced them up, we put up mirrors, we made the public bathrooms far improved they on our own dime. We also didn't require the dump trucks. We found wonderful antique tractors that could serve the same purpose as the dump trucks in terms of blocking the street. God forbid there was somebody racing down the street in a car. Instead of hitting one of the town's dump trucks, it, had, it would have hit a, an antique tractor. Stop. What about cleanup? Uh, we set up and did all of the takedown ourselves. I, obviously, I don't believe that we gathered the trash out of the cans. Uh, I cleaned the bathrooms personally. And again, everyone who's involved in this is volunteering. No one's getting paid on our end at all. And we work all year for this. And in the end, even when there's money, we're still giving it away. We're giving it away to try and create a farmer's market where everybody can come. Even if they can't afford a $50 ticket to come sit down and have wine and beer and listen to jazz, we want a bigger, healthier, better farmer's market. And this is the way to do it. That's the one thing. It, I mean, I know you have dealt with the different farmers, and there's this group and this group and this one with this. And this. We just want to build a beautiful structure and make it available. If somebody wants to come on Tuesday, they can come on Tuesday. If somebody wants to come on Friday, they can come on Friday. And it will be there. And frankly, once it's built, it's there for other things as well. And as you can see as, as, of some of those pictures, it's an asset to this community. And if I had my choice, and, and you know, I'd find it close to our beautiful store downtown because that's where the energy is. I like that they're out there still selling over by windows and there's a lot of traffic there. But obviously everybody's investing in our downtown because it's gorgeous. And it's it's got some it's got some successes. You know, two steps forward, one step back. I'd like this to be another two steps forward. You've had two uh, requests that you can vote on. One, one is a street vote, the other one is alcohol. The third one is obviously. Can we, did you fill out an application? Is it the town habit? I don't think so. <laughs> I'll take care of That's a new. Okay. I know we're, we're on track as far as uh, what um, uh, ABC requires. They just they require it sooner, closer to the event, but we're tracking it, so we should find it after you're doing it. We don't have did, you, did you contact all the people that had events last year with the 60-day application? Um, I don't even know if we had it finalized then. I don't think we had it finalized then. Does anybody have any other questions? Otherwise, I'll take my leave. Right. <clears throat> brought this up a long time ago. It looks like it's working. It's getting bigger every year, isn't it? This was something you thought of a couple of years ago or a long time ago? No, I found that in Tennessee, out of Tennessee. Jonesboro. 
Yeah. Yes, I saw them in a magazine and saw a picture and said, oh my gosh, we have to do that. We have to yeah. do that. It, it's nice. It's nice. Yeah. I saw the Jonesboro picture yesterday and I thought ours was just as good as my bed. I think mm -hmm. ours is pretty. I think ours is better. You can, you can compare a lot of things to a lot of things, but it's sort of like comparing towns to towns. I just read a big article in the internet there the other day where Bristol, Virginia is bankrupt. We don't want to become bankrupt. And but how, how much can one little town like Tattle continue to spend well, every year? And now, wait just a minute. Certainly. And this is my personal opinion. I used to own the laundromat down on the west end of town. Yeah, Every time you close those main streets, it killed my business. Uh, and again, as far as I'm concerned, you would never sell wine, beer, or liquor on the street in Tasman. Sure. If it was left up to me. I do not have anything against drinking. I just do not believe that that's the place to be selling. If you want to drink, stay home. Yeah, respond now. As far as closing the street down, let me also point out that last year we took great pains to move it so that seven, which at that point was still fledgling, would not have to close down. We made sure that our boundaries allowed their streets to still traffic and everything else. So we were very conscientious. We also didn't close the street down because the flower store at that point wasn't all the way at the corner. They were there just at the old, by the mini park, and they stayed open until two. So we didn't close those streets down until after their businesses closed. We were very conscientious about it. And in terms of spending money versus bringing people in, this is an amazing event. And as it continues to grow, you're going to get more and more people going, wow, what are they doing in Caswell? I want to drive there. I want to live there. I want to raise my family there because they're doing some really cool things. Yeah. So while you spend a little bit of money, the benefits you get from people who may be living elsewhere and decide it's too expensive to live in Charlotte anymore and it's too expensive to live in Orlando and Caswell's got something going on, you build your population, but, you build your tax base, but or just your traffic coming down the every, street. Every organization, every organization thinks we should waive our price <coughs> for them. You're no different than the others that have already come. They want us to weigh the price for them too. We, the town only has so much money. And until we grow some more, which we have started doing, I think we have to be a little more conservative. Does anybody have any other questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I agree that we have some money challenges that we need to look at, but I do believe that this is an event that's worth it continue to support and we'll discuss it and appreciate your time. Yeah. And I appreciate the farm at the table also yes. being willing to plow this back into the shelter and that type of thing. Yeah. I think that's the future. Is yeah. that light over there on your radar? Right Is there? Right that light right there? Yeah. No, because I think you need your parking. But so people are going to be parking. Well, there. that's true. Well, <laughs> we'll put it on the radar. We've got a couple different places on our radar right now, for sure. Don't rule anything yeah. out. Yeah. And and yeah. Yeah. We'll put it on the radar. We're still in, like I What's said, the nugget of an idea of phase. It's what? It's not for sale. It's not, it's not for sale. sale. <laughs> We're right here. It's oh. the town square. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, uh, we've, got, we've got two requests in order for them to plan. Yeah, we have this one to address. Yeah. And the other one, I can get back to the city. Okay. Right. First one is on the poster of the street on September 8th. I think we need to probably send over what they had last year as far as the location and the and the closure of the just the well the street itself it just stopped at uh, the seven and went up. We'll be sure to communicate with the business and be sure everybody's on the same page. Okay. All right. Got a motion to have a second. Any discussion? You're not a call for vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. 
say that? I didn't. Okay. You didn't give me time to answer my question. Okay. All right. I want to know now. Is this is just for the closure? Of the right. Yes, that is correct. Okay. I'll vote yes for that. Okay. Next is the uh, beer and wine. I'm motion for the uh, beer and wine be at this event. Motion to approve. I have a second. Second. Any discussion? You know, call for a vote. Um, favor say aye. Aye. Uh, Opposed? Uh, nay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Aye, on my side. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 And we'll take up the other one later. Take up what other one? The donation. The Okay, we'll move on. Uh, approval of the minutes. I hear a motion to adopt the uh, approve the minutes of the work session and council meeting for June 12th. So moved. And, uh, I have a second. Second. Do I have any additions or corrections? You're not call for a vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, next on the agenda is the approval of financial statements and financial report for June of uh, 2018. I have a motion to approve. So moved. I have a second. Second. Any discussion? Look pretty good at the top. Absolutely. Yeah, good. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Next is the town manager's update on ongoing projects. I have none at this time. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda is the committee conference updates. Planning Commission. The Planning Commission met last Monday night. Their discussions were on property, maintenance, and zoning. Uh, also talked about some of the houses that have been torn down, some of being torn down, and rezoning. Okay. Hey, do you have a full um, committee now, or do you still need it? Huh? Do you have a full committee now, or are you still looking for someone? We have a full committee right now. Okay. But we're always taking names for the Future. <laughs> yeah, I think Jerry Crumber joined. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Right. Sam, did you miss the overlay district? Huh? Did you miss the overlay district? Uh, no, I didn't mention the overlay district. We, we are also working on that for the. Basically, for shopping. Because yeah. for an overlay of existing B1, B2 areas for purposes of shopping and, and to further delineate what can and can't go in certain areas beyond the existing zone. Uh, prepared to bring out Chris's request and commission review that and are looking through that to see if there's any additional changes or possible recommendations for tweaking that possible in the spring before council. Possibly next month. Mm -hmm. Very important. Is it the spot by Lincolnshire primarily? No, it's not, it's not a specific form of any particular B1 B2, no. In terms of a specific property, no. Zone, yes. B1 B2. It's a lot of it's basically just like you've got a shopping center out here, and it's it's to it's designed for a certain thing, and it's to keep them from turning that shopping center into uh, storage buildings and so on and so forth. Yeah. Or as another example, like you have up here on Main Street, where you don't have any specific restrictions concerning except except what you already have in your B one or B two listing. For um, the fake lots you have across from the worst of the movies located now. Okay. Next on the agenda is the train depot committee. Well, the work at the train station continues. The, they're doing a lot of work in the interior now with the woodworking, and I think the painting will begin there soon. Painting is underway already on the exterior, it's looking good. The train station committee has met uh, during the past month. And we are reviewing and selecting some photos that will go on exhibit in the train station, the history of, of the community and the station itself. Todd met with us, as did Barry Rakes, our architect at the last meeting, and we discussed that. We're also looking at uh, some smaller photographs that will be on one of the walls that will sort of be a timeline to tell the history of the train station up through and including the restoration in 2018. Okay. 
Thank you, Terry. Next on the agenda is uh, mine is actually coming by the Total Planning Commission. I attended the uh, quarterly meeting uh, last month. Uh, the Common Plateau Land Commission encompasses uh, Tazel, Russell, Buchanan, and Dickinson counties. And, and basically, they, uh, the reason for basically the quarterly meeting was for the uh, finalization of the Sunset uh, Communications deal, which they indicated will be closing sometime later this month, around the 27th. And when that takes place, the Common Plateau actually owns, uh, with uh, partnership with the BBU, part of the fiber uh, that is running up the highway, uh, and they will get paid X number of dollars. Of that X number of dollars, uh, they will be putting uh, quite a, uh, like five million, I think it's three million dollars into a economic development fund that uh, they'll be loaning out. Uh, to different localities for economic development in this four counties. So uh, hopefully <coughs> once that gets finalized, I can bring you forward for, uh, what that figure is and then we can offer us that uh, opportunity to uh, <coughs> uh, borrow money uh, for our businesses. Not the town, but the businesses can actually borrow that money at a low interest rate. A revolving fund. Yeah, a revolving fund. Uh, they have a revolving fund that's two hundred fifty thousand dollars, which would be similar to our uh, fifty thousand dollar fund uh, that uh, we have here. So, all right, we'll move on. Uh, next on the agenda is unfinished business. It's the wastewater plant upgrade. Uh, Mr. Mr. Dawson, I can save you some time. Uh, during the work session, Kansas, you heard from Mr. Dawson about the uh, the grant that we're applying for for the upgrade to the sewer treatment plant. All I need is a motion to allow him to proceed forward to submit that application for potential funding. I'll make that motion. Second. I'll second. Okay, that'd be uh, Advantage uh, Partnerships, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Okay, motion and second. Any other discussion? You and I call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, motion carried. Thank you, David, for your information. Okay, next on the agenda is the grass ordinance discussion. Right. Uh, gentlemen, four years ago, you approached me about doing an amendment to <coughs> part of our health and sanitation uh, chapter of the code with regard to removal of weeds and cutting of grass, and made some changes to that particular draft. And how did you provide them with? Yeah, the former draft. So it's one where if, um, if you have that in front of you, I go through and read that. At least for doing as a first reading tonight. Uh, for consideration by the council on the second reading next month for possible passage. So I'll go ahead and read this as it is prepared. Uh, be ordained by the Council of the Town of Towson, Virginia, that I hereby enact the following amendment to Article 2 of Chapter 13A of the Code of the Town of Towson regarding the maintenance of grass, weeds, or other foreign growth on property. So be under Chapter 13A, Health and Sanitation, Article 2, Condition of Premises. Specifically under Section 13A-28, removal of weeds, collection of costs when done by the town, and exceptions. Subpart so A, the amended part of the section, I'll just read the whole section and I'll let you know specifically what the amendment will cover. The owner of vacant or developed real property within the town shall maintain the grass, weeds, or other form of growth on such property or any part thereof, and shall not permit the grass, weeds, or other form of growth on such property to exceed a height of 10 inches on at any such time or times as directed by the town or its agent after notice as provided in section 13A-29. And here's the amended part of the section. If the property is served by a street maintained by the town, the owner shall likewise be responsible for the maintenance of the grass, weeds, or other foreign growth from the property boundary to the gravel shoulder of the street or to the curb or curb sidewalk if no gravel shoulder is present. If the owner of such property fails to comply with a reasonable notice from the town and correct such condition, the town may have such grass, weeds, or foreign growth cut by the town or its agents. The costs or expenses thereof shall be chargeable to and paid by the owner of such property and may be collected by the town as taxes and levies are collected. That last two sentences with regard to the actual cost was already incorporated in the ordinance was in place four years ago. The other amendment would be to subsection B. This section shall not apply to, one, any property located in an agricultural zone, the boundary for which is under the fence, but shall apply to any portion of said boundary which is not under fence and abuts a sidewalk, curb, or gravel shoulder of a street maintained by the town. 
and two, any undeveloped property within any other zone within the town except the area of property directly abutting the sidewalk, curb, or gravel shoulder of the street, which property shall be maintained as set forth in paragraph A here and above for a distance of 15 feet from said sidewalk, curb, or gravel shoulder of the street. It's a straight ordinance adoption uh, that does not involve a specific tax or a change in the acquisition of property, so you do not need to vote here. Change on the grass, 12, it used to be 12 inches. It's been 10 since this was adopted long before 2014. It was positive that. We did the 13A completely revamp of the health and sanitation part of the codes. I want to say right from time first came or right maybe a year or two before. So it had already been in place with regard to the height. I'm positive of that. You want to make it eight? So whether it gets 10 or 12, well, it's too high. <laughs> I thought 12, it's where it was, 12 inches. Uh, I'll find the code on that one. Because I've seen that and I also had to uh, answer a call and advise them that anything over 12 inches got to be cut. Well, needless to say, you're not amending the 10 inches this time. <laughs> it only deals with whether or not where you mow it up to and what boundary you've got to mow or take care of. Mm -hmm. So the 10 inches doesn't apply. Okay, this is a question, but I've seen that in the code. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right. Uh, we'll move on to Lincolnshire Aqua Park. Okay, uh, Mary, there are several things I want to go over on the Aqua Park, but. One thing, um, we had a work session at the beginning of the meeting and due to the overwhelming outcry from the public, um, it's fully recognized that when we compare our two other aqua parks that are, you know, one is in around Beckley and the other one is around uh, Holston, that we are very, very competitive uh, with one and we're actually lower than both. Um, but due to the outcry and the town of Tazel's interest to see the public enjoy the investment we, uh, that we've put into the aqua park, uh, the town council has uh, willingly lowered rates. And I would like to request council uh, make a recommendation that you suspend the minutes and uh, suspend the process and add to this a vote to change those rates. Um, all I need is a motion to go on record to suspend the rules and add a motion to change those rates. Mm -hmm. And then we'll bring those rates. So second. second. All in favor say aye. 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 And at this time, I'd like to ask our clerk. Did you vote? No, I say no. <laughs> you want to leave them like they are? No, I want to leave. No, I want to bring it on down. You got, you got family. <laughs> family is what I'm looking at. Well, we got five or six little kids going out. You know, they can pay quite a bit of money there. That's what we're trying to do. That is what we're trying David, to do. David, David, we talked about this for half an hour. But y'all scrambled it up. I didn't know what the heck you were actually, actually, Councilman Catron asked you, David, if you're okay with it at the end of it, and you said yes. Okay. Well, I didn't say yes, that. Did. No, we, no, okay. no, no. It's a little long. I don't want to get. You got a four to one. But I, I okay. just want to see it. Okay. You got a four to one. Okay. I'd like now to we'll move on to the next. Again, if you would please read <coughs> the new rates. The new rates proposed would be $20 all day adult, and that includes the aqua park and pool admission. $15 all day, ages 14 and under. That includes the aqua park and pool admission. Um, if you buy a paddleboard or kayak for one hour and you purchase a all day aqua park ticket, you will get that for a rate of $5 an hour. And we will also have at any age, $10 per hour for the aqua park and pool. I just need a motion to approve. What was the last part there? At any age, $10 per hour for aqua park and pool. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve those rates. Second. Okay, any other discussion? Okay, 
Your name will call for a vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay, four and one. Okay, ma'am. Um, I would like to add to this, and I'll ask Mr. Reed if you'll be sure to get this on record. But what I'd like to do is take an opportunity, and then uh, Mr. Rosado will follow up behind me and give you a financial update on what took place on our opening weekend, Saturday and Sunday. But there's a lot of, for those of you, nobody reads Facebook, I'm sure, but there's a lot of rumors and in the windows out there that I would like to respectfully address um, and I will also be doing another um, Facebook live soon that really seems to get out and, and address some of the concerns we've had about the, uh, the aqua park. But due to the outcry we did re reduce the price of the aqua park and we're, we're really hoping that the public in the surrounding area will in, embrace the aqua park and utilize once again the tax dollars that's been invested out there. Um, one of the other concerns we have do we have the late clean fishing hook lines, bottles, and trash. I can tell you that we are always working to cosmetically clean up the lake trash uh, as long as people are using the lake will be there. So we can have staff go around the lake five minutes later there's going to be a bottle. But we do work very hard to to continue to maintain the cosmetics of that lake. Um, it's well recognized in the fishing industry that a, a two-walt fishing hook will completely evaporate in its existence in 90 days in the water, in fresh water. The aqua park is located in a minimum of 16 foot of water. So if you've got on a life jacket. Which you have to wear. Which you have to wear. So let me rephrase that. Not if you've got on a life jacket. You will have on a life jacket. There's no way, it's impossible for you to even attempt to, do that, to dive at that minimum level of 16 foot. And we, we use sonar graphing to visually look at that bottom, research that bottom for rocks, craters, cliffs, and drops-offs. And that aqua park was painstakingly and strategically placed where it's at in order to protect the public from any danger of rocks, any hooks that are on the bottom, even the dock that you jump off of, the minimum depth at that dock at low water is 10 foot. So you're jumping from a foot above the water with a life jacket on into 10 foot of water. The aqua park, once again, is a minimum of 16 foot. The water quality of the lake, and I've heard of just a ton of people make comments about the water quality. You know, I'm really excited to address that. The lake is fed through mountain springs. It flows through fields that is uncommon to Clater Lake, Holston Lake, Smith Mountain, Bugs Island, or any of the other larger lakes that are fed by rivers and go through massive amount of communities, downtowns, etc. The water quality of the lake has a recognized 126 uh, MPD, which is parts per million basically. So in the Commonwealth or any, anywhere in the United States, they say if it's above 126, you need to take other measures. That's got a huge uh, factor of safety in it. But just to let everybody know, we've never had a count that was over 13 parts per million. The last one we did was 0.612, it wasn't even a one. So the quality of the water is well above what you'll find in any lake that's fed by a huge river or a larger body of stream. We're very pleased with that. We would have never expended the funds without being sure that that water quality was above board. So um, any questions that y'all that hear out there in the public about water quality, 
Um, it is tested through a lab twice a week. We test it on Tuesday mornings and Thursday morning. It is a certified lab. It's not something that we take to my office and jiggle up in the milk jug. <laughs> it is a certified lab. So, the, the, you know, the testing is very accurate. You can get copies of that anytime you want to. And we take it very seriously. Um, the basketball goals that were located are now parking lot. We do have future cancel approved plans to relocate those basketball goals to an area at or around the existing tennis courts. So right now I think we have four courts that are used for tennis. We are looking right now at the option of making it three courts and utilizing one for basketball. So we do have future plans to do that. And when I say future plans, I can tell you that the aqua park, um, as was mentioned earlier, when we started planning the aqua park physically in the field, you could walk on the lake. It was froze from one end to the other. And we were actually out there surveying and we've been nonstop since then. We've not stopped. So I want to echo what the mayor said and another council agrees the public works department has went way over and beyond uh, what I ever expected. The quality of the facility, what we've put into it, it's top notch. We didn't shy on uh, because of the future goals that the council has set for the, for the entire park. So we're very proud of it. But it, it's come at a cost because there's one or two potholes in town I haven't got to yet. And there's a few signs that need to be replaced, and we will be getting on those. But once again, uh, the basketball goals will be replaced. Uh, they don't understand. A lot of people are confusing the county with the town. And just for the record, the aqua park belongs to the town of Tyler. It was paid for using general fund funds through the town of Tyler. We will be and are in the middle of application processes right now to offset those tax dollars that have been spent through grants. Um, so we will be aggressively pursuing, and we will continue to. As you well know, my staff is very efficient when it comes to grants, and we will continue to do that. But there were no funds um, given to the town of Tazewell by the county, state, or federal government to any level at this time. However, if you know your Southern District Supervisor, you think you can talk him into it, please. <laughs> um, fishing being taken away, that is not true. Um, needless to say, the Aqua Park were not allowing fishing in that vicinity. By Friday of this week, they will have it buoyed off. And what we're trying to do, obviously, is keep the users of the aqua park safe from people that are fishing. So inside that area, until the second Saturday, or the first Saturday after Labor Day, is that correct? There'll be no fishing in that zone. But we will be removing the inflatables from that lake well before the Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries starts their trout stocking program. And it will continue to be stocked. Um, the fishermen will be able to utilize that area after uh, Labor Day for fishing. And as a fisherman myself, I can tell you that that aqua park has moved fish to a tighter area. So you should be more successful in catching fish in this <laughs> uh, but, but the rumors about no fishing it's absolutely a rumor. The Virginia Department of uh, Game and Inland Fishery will continue to stock it with trout in their trout program starting in the fall. Um, also, uh, handicap accessibility for the fishermen. Um, we have another dock um, that hopefully will be installed by spring, and it's going to replace the wooden dock that sits up at about eight degrees, uh, it's antiquated. So we will be replacing that dock, hopefully before the spring, with an ADA approved fishing dock that'll be much wider, it'll be much longer, 
and uh, our citizens that are handicapped will be able to access that dock and utilize it. So yes, we will be doing that. Um, I've had some people ask about the possibility of a beach. And unfortunately, the first thing that we looked at was a beach and canceled even voted to approve the beach. And after we investigated the area, the outcroppings of, of rocks that are going out in the lake, unfortunately will not allow a beach unless we block it off um, and not allow people off the beach to the water. So there's still a possibility for future beaches. Unfortunately, you won't be able to access the water on foot there for obvious reasons. Um, mentioned the trout stockings. Um, and we do not charge for parking. There's no charge at all for using the Lincolnshire Park as it has been used in years past. The only fees that are out there or once again for the aqua park we are offering a combination now as mentioned earlier by our clerk for the pool and heavy discounts on the kayaks and i can assure you either one of the parks that are quite a distance away from us we are now half the price so help me i'm reaching out to each one of you when you see the comments let them know that there's you know, help me make it accurate. Um, and thank the council every chance you get for spending your funds to give back to the community and not only for our youth, but everybody can enjoy that that aqua park. So, that's all I've got. Oh, being so, so. Yeah, being I'd like to give an update on actually what took place so okay. right Sir, and so. Uh, first off, I do want to say, uh, kind of touching on the lines Mr. Max said at the beginning, uh, I'll just say it, um, huge thanks to all the people that were involved in this. Uh, there were just a lot of people that did not get recognized, and I go for a while on certain people that have helped. Um, for example, Chris Hurley, Sean Haney, um, Leanne, I mean, we've had a ton of help in all departments. Collectively, it just kind of, it should make the town prideful that every department not just Parks and Rec, you know, every department put their hand into making this for the town. Um, I just, I, I, you know, a lot of people up here heard a lot of other ones that we are money hungry. This right here proves we're not. We're trying to give it back to the town and everybody that collectively helped out here had that same intention. So I just want to say thanks again for that. I mean, everybody, I, 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 there might be one or two people that were not there, but showed up at some point. My own concession cook was up there helping at one point. She said, we need an extra hand, she came up and helped. We didn't ask her, she came up to help, she wanted to be involved. Um, that to the town should hold into a sense of pride for the town of Tazewell. I'm extremely grateful, I mean, never had a doubt about it, but seeing it just collectively how everybody jumped in to throw their hand into the same goal that we all have, it's something that just makes me proud to see. And I'm hoping that the town realizes that if we go on and do changes, that it's all for them, not for us. Um, that being said, for this weekend, a little slower than we would have liked, but the people that were there, I spoke to many parents, I spoke to many kids, they had a blast. They absolutely loved it. Um, we actually had some, there's this baseball tournament happening here. A couple of people from Manassas came on, uh, from Manassas, Virginia, which is Northern Virginia. They came Saturday, took their kids out. The next day on Sunday, I saw them again. They did not use the aqua park, but they brought other parents to walk the lake. They said the lake was beautiful and they just wanted to walk it. That right there was a glimpse of the future of what we're trying to do. It's expanding, you know, that one family is going to tell somebody else, you know, they're going to go back to Virginia. Oh, we were in Tazewell, we just walked this beautiful lake there. It's going to put Tazewell on the map. That's just a small glimpse of what we are trying to accomplish and are going to accomplish. Um, in terms of the fees and everything, concession for the Aqua Park for Saturday and Sunday was $61.55. Most people did bring coolers and drinks, and that's where I heard a lot about the beach. They actually just, they put their chairs out on the grass and said, we love the beach. <laughs> now, none of them were complaining. They just said, like, you know, happy, you know, advice. Like, you know, the beach would be great. We'd love it because they still sat out there. Um, but that's why kind of our concession was low. <coughs> Some did go down to the pool concession to actually get a full meal. Um, so there was that as well. 
Uh, for kayak rentals, that goes for paddle boards as well. Um, it was $190 for the two days. Um, everybody who did it spoke to them as well as many as I could. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. They said it was just a great time to be peacefully on the water, see the kids jumping off, little Johnny getting pushed off when he played, old in the water laughing, coming out. I mean, it, just a ton of positive feedback for everybody that I had there. The Aqua Park itself for the two days made $1,270 for the first weekend, and that is with 59, the rough estimate of 59 uh, on the 7th on opening day, and 29 on, on the 8th. Now, another thing I want to keep in mind, and so everybody understands, is that with July 4th weekend, a lot of people left. A lot of people went out to beach trips, uh, you know, they go on vacation, had it planned out before we even had this official day on. So I think those numbers will rise as we continue, um, and that's just, you know, that's obviously, I, I hope it does, I would love to see more people there. But at the same time, with these small numbers, it gave us a lot of time to kind of see what works, what doesn't. We learned a lot. Um, a lot of new ideas came about. I have a giant list that just kind of came out of nowhere that, you know, I wouldn't have known if we had too many people. And, you know, with too many people, more issues come about, and that's something we don't want people to see. Now, collectively, I don't think we had any major issues that affected anybody's opinion that was there, which is phenomenal, especially for a first day and just getting this done in a two month span. I think that's great. Um, now, something that we cannot record was basically the people. And I'm there most every weekend at some point, whether it's working or just enjoying the lake myself. And this weekend, I saw more people riding bikes than I've ever seen. I've seen more people just sitting on the hill, listening to the music. We had some music coming out of the concession stand and just having a good time listening, just watching. Um, a lot of those people actually ended up going to the pool. Prices were high, they understood that, but they came up to view what was happening. They're interested, they're talking. And I think that's just kind of another step forward into what we are looking for. Um, so kind of when I judge the success of the weekend, I'm not looking too much into the numbers, but the reaction of people, how we made that impact on certain people. I, we had kids from all over the place just loving it, coming out choking on water they jumped in laughing in the water too much, and they still want to go back in. Come back in for a couple minutes, mom had put more sunscreen, they went right back in. Um, that is how I kind of define success, and I really, like I said, I talked to many people, and I did not hear any complaints, and all the kids just left with a big smile on their face, or really tired. <laughs> so that collectively, I think, I think for the first weekend and, and how much time we had and what we accomplished in that time frame, I think it was a very successful weekend. Um, and like I said, I think it's been the numbers are going to continue to rise, and we're going to continue to look into putting more stuff and giving more back to them. But as of now, that is where we're at, and like I said, I, I consider it a very successful first weekend. <coughs> Thank you, man. Good job, Kevin. One other person who not forgotten uh, everybody else is we want to thank David Woodard for coming out with uh, uh, the remote uh, uh, camera and uh, flying over at different times and basically uh, uh, for the tourism. Okay, we'll move on. Uh, this is approval of the annual uh, cafeteria plan resolution and I'll read the resolution. Uh, on this date, <coughs> Town of Tazewell Council members did meet to discuss the information of the uh, Tazewell, Town of Tazewell Flexible Benefits Plan to be effective July 1, 2018. Let it be known that the following resolution were duly adopted by the Town of Tazewell Council members and that such res resolutions as not being modified or presented as a data bureau. Whereas the form cafeteria plan is authorized under section 125 of the Internal Revenue Code of 1986 presented to this meeting is hereby adopting and approving the proper officers of the employer are hereby authorized and directed to execute and deliver the plan administrator one or more copies of the plan in whereas that the plan year shall be beginning uh, July 1, 2018 and ending June 30th, 2019 and whereas that the employer shall uh, continue to uh, that the plan uh, amount significant to meet its obligation on the cafeteria plan in accordance to the uh, terms of the plan document and shall notify the plan administrator to uh, such periods uh, shall be applied and whereas the uh, proper offices of the employer shall act as soon as possible to notify the employees of the adoption of the 
Cafeteria plan by delivering to each employee a copy of the summary plan description presented to this meeting, whereas form is hereby approved and there therefore be it resolved that I, Donald McCann Jr., on behalf of the town council, certifies that the attached here exhibits A and B are true copies of the plan documents and summary plan descriptions of the town council's flexible benefit plan approved and adopted. The full government resolution be further resolved that I certify and attest that the above res uh, resolutions are made with consent of the full town council, each of whom were in attendance at this day, adopted on this day. Do I hear a motion to adopt this resolution? No, no. I have a second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Next on the agenda is the nomination request of the uh, 10 11 boys, 11 12 boys, and 11 softball all star teams. Okay, you've got a letter of request in your, in your, in your agenda to um, donate to the, uh, to the boys, uh, boys baseball and the girls softball all star team. Take it to three teams. I think, I think it's actually. We'll get three. three. All three. Yeah. 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 Make a motion to redonate $100 per team. Okay, got a motion to add second. Second. Any discussion? Yeah. Yeah. None. Call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Uh, we need to throw you down with A couple other things before we go into the executive session. Uh, I, I know everybody has uh, uh, heard that the uh, match ball is, is closing and uh, they did send, send me a letter uh, to the town uh, designating that uh, they will be closing probably between September the 17th and October the 1st. And the amount of employees that will be affected in Canada will be 28. So uh, hopefully, if you hear anybody uh, think uh, uh, the Tasman Mall is owned by a group that uh, Charlie Hart, and if you hear anybody that, that is interested in coming to Tasman uh, for that location, uh, please contact the town or we can contact uh, uh, Charlie. Uh, also, uh, our Main Street Moments is uh, coming up uh, in the month. And there's plenty of activities uh, planned. Uh, we have a concert on Friday night at the, uh, at the Lawn of Tassel. I think it's 6.30, is that correct, Your Honor? Uh, yeah, that's correct. You want to discuss, give us a quick update on Main Street Moments, if you would, please. I think we met about two to nine Call for a vote on favor say aye. 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 